What's up, NCK fam? Fam, it's your girl now back again with another video and in today's video is all about multicultural friendships and the world of quarantine and covid um i decided to just bring on some of my good friends here to help me uh talk about multicultural friendships via zoom so i hope you guys enjoyed this video um first i want to introduce you all to I want to introduce you all to Anna. So Anna, can you just introduce yourself and um, yeah, say what you identify as. Hi, my name is Anna. Um, I identify as half Asian and half Jewish. And um, yeah, I'm originally from Atlanta. Okay, thank you. Next, Ashley. Hi everybody, my name is Ashley. Um, I am 21, I live in the Bronx, and I identify as Dominican. Okay. Ava? Hi everybody, I'm Ava. I'm also from the Bronx, and I identify as Sanguishan Jamaican or Caribbean American. And Julie. Hey everybody, I'm Julie. I'm from the great state of New Jersey. You feel me? <laughs> um, I'm from Newark, New Jersey, and I identify as Haitian American. Awesome. Well, this is the gang for today's discussion. So ladies, what are some benefits of having multicultural friendships? First of all, describe if somebody could describe what are multicultural friendships and then what are the benefits of having these friendships? Getting to know other people's um, cultures and backgrounds um, definitely makes you more understanding, um, but also it makes you relate because a lot of times even people with really different backgrounds than myself, um, there are a lot of things like, oh, my family does that too. Like, oh, we have that as well. Oh, so yeah, it's a nice way to relate and get to know each other. Yeah, to add on to Anna, I think that multicultural friendships can be a whole a lot of things. I think sometimes it's very easy to just focus on the ethnic side of things, but really like culture can be anything like merely just me. Like Chanel and I are both from Jersey, but I'm from like, I went to school in Maplewood. She went to school in Orange, totally different cultures, but I can learn from her um, and just see how school was for her and see how her um, experiences were um, and I t and I agree with everything Anna said um, I don't know for me like I just learned that like dag I'm not the only one that went through this stuff not saying everything was bad you know because that sounded bad but like it's just like dag like we really relate much more than I thought like so yeah I definitely feel like my friendship my multicultural friendships makes me a better person. Like like you guys said, you know, it makes me more empathetic, more humble, um, more down to earth, you know, able to relate to all kinds of people from all over, you know? So, yeah. Um, I think in terms of like benefits of having multicultural friendships, the food, because let me tell y'all something about food. Food is great. And having friends from a bunch of different places, um, like cultural, like ethnically and culturally, but like also just like geographically, like living in different places in the states because we're all, yeah, we all live in the states. Um, so like just like knowing different like food preferences in like different states because New York and Jersey are very close, but they're very different. Um, so even just that, so food is a benefit. It's probably my number one, one of my number one benefits. Okay. Can I add something else for now? Yeah, something else is like. Having multicultural um, friendships, you, you get to learn about your blind spots. I think sometimes when you're not um, engaged with other people that may be different from you or even similar um, with you, like you may have a certain perspective. And I think that having those friendships can open your eyes to be like, dad, like I had this monolithic view of y'all and that's trash. So help me to expand, help me to um, clear it up and to expand my knowledge and my perceptions of 
Mm-hmm. What do you be, what do you all believe are some like tensions or problems or learning curves that happen in multicultural friendships? I know Julie, you started talking about like how um, your perception changed when you started to get to know um, a person. So are there any other like tensions or learning curves that can happen in multicultural friendships? I could go. I think I think it has to do with what you've learned before and this idea of unlearning. <laughs> um, I can be personal, like growing up, I always heard that like Jamaicans and Haitians don't get along. Not sure why, not sure what the beef was. Also heard that like Dominicans and Haitians don't get along. But it's just like, okay, that one I know a little lot. But then <laughs> also, it's like um it's very like it it's easy for you to stay in that space of like oh just because everybody else adheres to that that mindset i can just do it just to keep it easy but if you're but i think that like you have to be willing to do the work of like i'm i'm going to unlearn this thing and i'm going to see if i'm going to see what can come out of it like i don't think that we should dismiss people based on other prejudices from others like that's 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 bad yeah yeah, I agree. I know that there's always, Chanel and I have talked about it, how um, the stereotype that Asians and um, like in America, African-Americans don't get along with each other. Um, and I guess growing up in Atlanta, because there's a really like high percentage of um, Asians and Blacks, um, I saw some tensions, but mostly growing up, like I didn't really ever consider it or think about it. But I do know that it definitely exists based on like the histories clashing um like among like with their journeys to the country so yeah and chanel had a term for it i forgot what it was called oh when i was talking about like the differences between horizontal and vertical racism Mm -hmm. okay so basically what that is um is just the notion of Vertical racism is like minorities at the bottom and then like white people at the top. And so that power dynamic, but horizontal racism is like when there's racism between the different ethnic groups, the different minorities. Okay, so moving more personally, you know, I just wanted to get the general, you know, benefits and you know, from having multicultural relationships. But I want y'all to talk about y'all personal um, friendships. How did these friendships form? Were they organic? Were they with intention? Um, Yeah. Okay, I can go. And if I ramble, just let me know and I'll shut up. Um, But I think growing up like in school and whatever as a a wee child, um, I think a lot of my first like my initial friendships with people um, weren't, or I don't want to say they weren't organic, but I also don't want to say that I necessarily chose them because I was kind of just friends with who I went to school with um, or like who I, so I grew up in church too. So whoever I went to church with, that was my age and whoever I went to school with, that was my age. Those just happened to be my friends because those were the only people my age that I was around. Um, So like it wasn't forced per se, but I also didn't really choose it does that make sense um but i think now that i'm like older and i have like more agency over where i go um yeah or like where my feet find me or whatever um i think i have i think my friendships now that i've made since i want to say maybe like high school yeah since i started like choosing where i was gonna be um so that started in high school so like high school and now college um i think now more of my friendships are intentional and I kind of see people and I'm like, hmm, I think I'd like you. I think we'd be cool. Um, then we usually end up being friends. Um, yeah, so I think now that I'm older and have more like, I don't wanna say control, but like, I can't think of a better word. So control over like who I get to be friends with and who I let um, into intimate spaces with me. Um, yes, autonomy, better word. I was, I don't know what other word I was thinking about, but yeah. Um, yeah to like choose 
um and like be friends with who i want to be friends with for whatever reason um yeah yeah i might have more i might add to somebody else that says something that sparks a thought in me i completely agree um with like you know when you're in school like you have to choose from this limited pool of like who's around you um i think in college like i definitely felt like i had more autonomy um even though like it's still a pool <laughs> of people that you can choose <laughs> you're, like but it's a bigger pool i guess um i think for me like i i'm reflecting a lot of my friendships so a lot of my friendships come from um a lot of similarities um so like for example a lot of friends of mine so even like being an ethnic minority is a similarity even though there are differences between you know and that's like that's something that i can feel like i can relate to and with a lot of my friends um being our faith you know um having similar faith having similar likes and 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 dislikes um so even though um we have a lot of differences there's not a lot of similarities different similarities that i feel like brought my friendships together um yeah I think for me like my friendships I want to say they form pretty organically. I wouldn't say okay, I would say organically but with intention if that makes sense. So, I mainly surround myself with like minority people um but then and I find like groups within so I guess that part is intention but also kind of organic too because not necessarily that when you're in the same group you'll automatically mesh so i guess that's part organic part not um but then like my friendships outside limited friendships outside of um my ethnic group and like my <laughs> you caught it <laughs> i would say that also just happens i guess kind of organically too it's not like i'm searching for it but if, like we mesh we mesh something like that so yeah i know people like intentionally say oh i'm going to put myself in these circles i'm going to make sure i go to these groups these whatever to diversify their friendships um but i want to say a little bit of both for me I guess going into friendships, I don't necessarily think like, oh, I want to surround myself with, with these people in this culture. Like, um, it kind of yeah, it just happens naturally. Um, but I don't think it's like a bad thing to want to like get to know a culture and um, become friends with them and understand them like that. Do you think it was difficult for you to find connections with people from other cultures? Yes, because I was the one that caused the problem. If that makes sense? Oh, tell in the, me. In the sense of like like you the way you come in is the way it, like as much as you put in like that's how much you'll get out or significantly less um or significantly more depends. But for me like with certain um ethnic groups like I noticed that I like to stay with um with like black people like POCs because I'm like that's what I'm comfortable with but like whenever I was in a space with non POC people I was kind of like like I could do it but I was still holding back parts of myself because I'm like I don't want to get close to y'all still still a little fuzzy about y'all <laughs> like like that <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like but I'm not even going to hold you like some of the experiences that I had with non POC like they were really good and it and you would think that like that would help me that would push me further to have friendships with with people that are not POC but for some reason like I still try to be like mm, like I'm going to stay over here and then when I need to come over here like I'll do it um so I think it's just like a matter of um just like how you're coming in and whether or not you're like willing to be open minded about all of those things. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um Anna, you did like a presentation the other day about like fixed and growth mindset. Um if you would like to talk about that, I think that like totally applies 
to just stepping out of your comfort zone and um yeah <laughs> stepping out of your comfort zone and um yeah having these different friendships um yeah well i guess i never really thought about how i could apply to mindsets in general um because like to like friendships i mean like relationships um, but definitely if you're fixed, like, oh, I only relate to these groups, I don't relate to these, um, this culture is weird, that culture, like, is boring, that you really limit yourself to things. Um, and rather than having that approach and saying, like, oh, like, maybe I might be interested in this, actually, maybe I might be surprised and to try things. Um, and then actually make informed decisions um because obviously you're not going to mesh with every culture that you come in contact with inevitably um but i think it's a good idea to keep an open mind in that regard um, mm. for that. Mm. like how you said um make informed decisions because sometimes it's very easy to just be like i have to do it like you don't have to do anything to be honest don't force yourself in a position where you don't want to be in because it's not gonna only affect you, but it's also gonna affect the people that you're hanging out with and it's not a good look. I love that. I love that. I love that. So how often is like race brought up in your conversations, y'all multi-ethnic conversations? And what does that look like? Like for me, I don't even know. I feel like I talk about race a lot, but especially like the past events this year, like, I, I don't know, like, especially everything that happened with like George Floyd and like all those protest movements, it was kind of hard for me to enter like non-black spaces and like be with people who are not black. Um, but I feel like generally it's slightly easy for me to talk about race. Cause I mean, it affects every part of everything that I do, everything that we do, so. I don't know. Those conversations are not necessarily difficult, but they can be a little a little challenging when you're having to be somewhat of a teacher, but then also in that same reverse, somewhat of a student. And I also feel like it's a disservice, like if you're in multicultural spaces to not bring up, I don't know. I just feel, okay, there's two sides of that. One side is like, Okay, you're in multicultural spaces. It's important to talk about how race affects the different people in those spaces and to acknowledge that, okay, in this space that you identify as this. But then also, I feel like on the other side, when you're in multicultural spaces, that might not be something that you always want to talk about or always want to bring up or always acknowledge that I am this. Yes, the world tells me this. I'm this all the time. So I feel like, I don't know, there's a balance. So yeah, y'all just let me know, like, how often is race brought up in your conversations and what does that look like? Um, I feel like this is a complicated question <laughs> for me. So like, just like Latina, right? I'm Dominican. And in Dominican circles, like the conversation of race looks very, because so, sometimes it's very different um, than I have with other people. Um, but definitely, of course, during the protest, like that was a really big thing, especially, you know, even in my family, like we were trying to, you know, get educated together and, um, and you know, just do what we need to do to, to understand what's happening in the world. Um, but even like, there's been just a lot of even personal thoughts of like, okay, I'm Dominican, but like, where, how do I identify racially, you know? And then like what you said, like um, another, another side of things is that when I'm around, um, racial minorities like that's not sometimes that's it's a big thing when we're we're sharing how we're feeling and like we're seeking healing you know what i mean and other times it's like actually no i don't i want this to be a healing space and look and and i don't want us to talk about this but talk about other things so sometimes that like healing space can look very different when i'm with different people you know what i mean um so i think it's it's brought up it's brought up when it needs to be brought up and it's especially brought up when a lot of things are happening in the world does that make sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
and I'm more talking about um, ethnic minorities and racial minorities than, than um, non-TLC. Um, okay, so because of my major, right? <laughs> I'm an Africana studies major, so I talk about um, race, specifically blackness, like all the time, like that's all I talk about. Um, and I think in terms of like friendships and like relationships um, with people, I find that like, because I'm so like heavily like involved in like research related to that stuff, um, sometimes like, like my parents think I'm radical, but like, it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, yeah, I don't mind. So like with friendships and stuff, I don't have a lot of like very close um is that true yeah i don't have like a large amount of non-black friends um and i found that like i have this one like white guy friend right really cool really close and all that um and i think we talked about race in our friend group this was like last summer um we talked about race a little bit in our friend group um and it felt kind of dismissive on his end um and i was just like i don't know how to <laughs> i don't know how to get through this conversation <laughs> um like it was it was just weird i don't really remember how the conversation ended um or if i even like added anything to the conversation because i think another one of my friends was like i think it was more their conversation than a conversation that we were all having um and i was just kind of like how would i navigate racial conversations with like like if it was if it was our conversation like how would that have like happened um but like as y'all were talking like i was thinking that like for me um racial conversations with people in the in like ethnic communities can sometimes be a little bit more tense than like conversations with non-black people or like non-ethnic people um i don't even know if that makes sense but um yeah i thought i i think because i'm thinking about like my family and stuff and like with like more traditional values of like race and whatnot um because like race in the caribbean is thought of very differently than race in the united states um so like even like having those conversations um in terms of relationships like when the protests were happening and all that stuff was happening over the summer um i got into a few arguments with my dad because we had very different views about what is happening and what's going on and i'm like no like i'm not gonna tell you you're wrong but like you're wrong um and it was just it was a lot of tension and i was because i'm like i want you to understand what i'm saying and i'm hearing you and i'm understanding what you're saying and i want you to know that like what you're saying is a little bit harmful to some groups of people um but then like i was also like seeing like from his end like what that what that looks like on his end too so it's, it's weird it's it's not weird but like it's interesting in terms of like it's different every time like every person you have a conversation with um no matter what their background is like the conversation is going to be different and i think a lot of it um is easier or conversations are like easier to manage or like easier to get through like when both parties are like willing to listen and understand like where the other person is coming from and there's like no hostility and all that stuff so yeah i'm talking too much so i'm gonna leave my mic <laughs> no i loved your input i loved it i thought it was rich <laughs> okay ladies i don't want to make this a long video so one last question um how are you in your friendships actively trying to learn more about each other's culture and also slash what are some your what are some advices that you would give to people who are um in like more homogeneous friendships to express themselves and step out of that and um try to be in more ethnic friendships so two part question. I don't know if this totally aligns, but definitely like with my friendship with Chanel. Um, <laughs> we 
sometimes we talk really directly about like our racial identities and the things that we go through and we witness or we um, you know try to support um, but also just little things like movies like I saw her this movie about the struggle of um, a Korean immigrant to America um, I know that like we've talked about other things as well as far as um, the type of things that give us joy um, and are like it might not even even be like totally racially connected but certain things like I know Chanel is really connected with her faith um, and I'm not as much but I definitely you know use her and she uses me as like a support system in different ways um, and for that leads me into the answer to the second part of your question whereas like even though like you're friends with someone who's not part of your culture or your identity, like you can still connect with them in various ways that may not be part of your, that their like racial or ethnic identity, but um, you just never know. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know if that was <laughs> totally related, but I definitely just wanted to say that. I think for me, I think with my, with all of my friendships, like I try to be very intentional about being a part of their life. So like, I want to be a part of your family. I want to be, I want to know what's happening. You know what I mean? I want to be there. And I feel like that is kind of my way of wanting to, um, to experience your life. You know what I mean? Um, and how all of who you are kind of comes into your picture. So I feel like that, that is kind of my way of how um, I've tried to be very intentional with my friends of learning about their ethnic and racial backgrounds and, um, and all the things. Um, and I guess my advice is like, we, just going back to the first question of the benefits, like there's so much beauty, I think, of having um, multicultural friendships. Like you learn so much about others and you learn so much about yourself. You learn about the good things and you learn about the bad things <laughs> of, of what needs work in your heart, you know what I mean? And, um, and I feel like I've just, also like my friends have connected me to so many other friends. And so you just make more friends. So my advice would just be um, to have an open mind and, um, and have that desire, you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, I have a couple different things I wanna say, so I wanna make sure I get to everything. Um, okay, so for me, um, so I grew up around yeah my elementary school was mostly caribbean and african people and then my middle school was mostly black american and caribbean american people and my high school was black american caribbean american uh and latinx folks and then now college is like a mix of everybody um so i grew up not so i'm like learning about people from everywhere really um and i kind of realized that like like a lot of what i do isn't so much like intention intention um so i feel like i can do a lot better in like being intentional about learning about other people's things so i kind of just let i kind of just let things happen and like when conversations happen they happen or like when like um we hang out and like conversations happen they just happen um or like like say a special holiday for one of my friends cultures would come up and then like they'd be excited about it and I'll ask like, like explain, I want to know more. Um, so that kind of stuff. So I think I can do better than that, but um, shout out cause my friends are here. Um, Y'all are my friends. Um, but I think that um, I really admire the way that both Chanel and Julie like really like, like nah, nah, I'm for real. Like y'all, like I really do admire the way that y'all like, well, not just, not only like welcome other, um, cultures into your spaces um or like personal like intimate lives but like y'all go out of your way to do that um and I really I really do admire that so like I'll give examples for the people since they don't know so I'll tell them um if you've been keeping up with the NCK videos you know that <laughs> Chanel went abroad and Chanel is always talking about different cultures and Chanel loves food and Chanel loves trying food from other people's cultures. Um, and she's like very like happy to do that, very excited to do that um, and very willing to do that. And I really do admire that about her. 
Um, and then Julie, like, we have friends from everywhere. So like, Julie will go out her way to like learn, even as far as like languages, like different languages from her own, um, from like some of our other friends and like knowing about the food. And like, even if the food sound like something she don't want to eat, like she'll still come for them. But she'll be like, that's cool though. If that works for you, that works for you. Um, <laughs> that works for you, right? Um, so yeah, I really do admire that. Um, and I really do like look up to y'all in that way. Um, yeah, I'm inspired. Wow, Ava, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. I agree. Um, and I think my advice with that is to like, like my advice for myself and then like for everybody like watching, um, it's like learn from the examples I just gave. Like, if you have to go out of your way, like go out of your way. Like, if you want to learn, like go learn. Like, it's like there's YouTube, there's Google. You probably got some friends with cultures that you don't even know about. Um, like even within like just because most of my friends are of Caribbean descent. Every single Caribbean country country is different and has a very very different culture. And I've even found that like learning some like learning so much more about like my friends and like their backgrounds and like their um some of their family traditions um just by knowing where they come from um so i think even just like if you have to go out your way like go out of your way do that um yeah yeah that's it can i go next okay um it's very interesting because i don't know how i was thinking of the question like I heard the word multicultural, but I think I was looking at it in like a limited point of view, but like it goes back to the question of like, what is multiculturalism and what is culture to begin with? And it has to do with like the traditions, like the practices that people do, like the food that they eat, like the language that they speak. And then when Ava had mentioned, like I it finally clicked before Ava like said her, said her piece, that like, oh, like I do, I do do that, you know? Um, yeah, so like I emphasize culture cause I just am a person that likes to learn. Like catch me in the middle of the night, just Googling random stuff. Like I have no, like open new time, like 20 new times <laughs> in there in the middle of the night. If someone says something that is like of interest to me, like I'd be willing to do the research afterwards after the conversation. Something that I do want to grow in though is, um, asking the person to share it themselves rather than me looking at the internet for the source because people the people that are around you also have a lot of insight you know and their families too um also language is important to me I'm rambling but I'm like trying to catch all the thoughts in my head um but also language is important like growing up I don't speak Haitian Creole that much so like I'm, I love it, I appreciate it. So if I have the chance to learn someone else's culture, someone else's language and be able to talk to your family with it, like it's lit. If I could learn how to dance, though I cannot dance. Like I'd be willing to take the effort to do that. Like Ava said with the food. Yeah, I will love you. I will love you with your choices. But it also, it all just comes with the posture of are you willing, like how much do you want like how much do you value the friendship and are you willing to do the work of like making sure that you're keeping them like you're you're letting them know that you value them and something that i do that i don't realize that i do often is i i talk about what i do in my culture and then i say what do y'all do so like the other day we were talking about um that like, I, I don't even have an example shoot oh wow that's awkward. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so like, there's just the, um, just like, you can also start off by like, this is something that I do. What do y'all do? Because it's, it's like a conversation of like, yeah, we do something similar to that. Actually, we do this instead. And that way it won't feel like, for, like, tell me about all everything in your culture. Like that's a, that's a very broad thing to do. And if you give them like something to start off with, but also in a space of like, you wanting to be in a posture of learning. And I think that makes the big difference. And some advice that I give is like, whatever you like, try to learn it. Try to use that as a way to learn, but don't let that be the only way that, that, that lets you learn. So like Chanel likes food. So she learns about different people's foods, but that's not the only thing that Chanel does. Chanel also does other things. I like languages. 
but I don't just stick to learning about the languages. I learn about the background and things like that. So start off, if you have um, trouble, just start off with something that you like to do that you know that like, oh yeah, I like food, I like dancing, I like music, I like writing, I like stories. Then like work with that and then take the take the stretch to do that. And I do speak to Ashley's mom in Spanish. <laughs> I haven't spoken to her in Spanish in a while and my Spanish got trash. <laughs> so. And Ashley teaches us how to dance too. She yeah. Does. I forgot to mention before like, um, my favorite multicultural space is when there's like multicultural worship going on and like the singing in the languages that y'all was talking about before. That's like my favorite. Um, but yeah, so thank you all for being in um, this video. NCK fam, if you want to see these ladies again, make sure to comment down below. I'll leave their Instagrams and everything you need to know. But yeah, we're out. <laughs>